The chances are very high that you have never heard anything about football in the theme country. Welcome to football in Antigua and Barbuda. Hello and welcome to Futur, the football world trip around the globe here on YouTube. I'm your host Björn, and after dealing with Anguilla in the last episode, we will stay in the beautiful Caribbean. Antigua and Barbuda wants to be explored. Even though the small island nation just takes a minor role on the worldwide football stage, the beautiful game is a thing of passion on the Caribbean island nation that is just short under 100,000 residents. Football is one of the oldest games on the island and was first played in the early stages of the last century. It is the second most popular sport right after cricket, like in the most Caribbean nations. Grammar schools on the island made team sports obligatory for the May students, and matches against other schools, even from neighboring islands like Montserrat or St. Kitts and Nevis, brought a competitive spirit to the island. So, it's no surprise that the governing body of football, the Antigua and Barbuda Football Association, or short ABFA, was founded early on in 1928. The national team is nicknamed the Banner Boys, after a local music genre. Banner is a calypso-like style of music popular on the island. Their first match was played in 1972 against Trinidad and Tobago. They lost the match 1-11, which even is the highest defeat of the Antigua national team in history. Their biggest win was a 10-0 against the US Virgin Islands in 2011. To this point, they never qualified for the World Cup or the Gold Cup. The best results in a regional tournament were two fourth places at the Caribbean Cup. They even hosted the 2012 edition of the Caribbean Cup, but sadly had to pack their bags after only getting one point in the group stages. The national selection gets equipped by Spanish sports manufacturer Yoma. Antigua's biggest rivals come from the neighboring islands of St. Kitts and Nevis, and to a lesser extent, Haiti can be considered another site that the Antiguans don't really like. The federation made some headlines in 2018 when the assistant coach and the equipment manager of the national team got arrested in Jamaica after a match. Both staff members got caught trying to smuggle weed out of the country and were arrested at the airport. Lucky for them, all charges were dropped later on since the Jamaican authorities couldn't gather enough evidence to convict them. Let's check out the domestic competitions on the island. The top flight is called the Premier Division. First played out in 1968, it contains 10 clubs that face each other two times in a round robin format. The league champion and the runners up qualify for the CFU Championship, a qualification tournament for the CONCACAF Champions League. The last two place clubs of the season go down into the second division. Altogether, the Antiguan League Pyramid consists of three levels and is home to around 50 domestic clubs. The historically greatest club of the country is Empire FC with 13 championships, but their last championship was celebrated in 2001. Since then the club declined and nowadays can be found in the second division. Bossa Sports Club and Palm FC each won 5 championships. The last championship was played out in 2019 with Liberta winning the first trophy. The two following seasons were abandoned and cancelled due to the pandemic. Since all Antiguan divisions are considered to be non-professional, players of each club need to work day jobs. The ABFA wanted to change that around 10 years ago, when they registered a professional club to join the US American USA Championship, the second highest professional level of football in America. The first professional site was named Antigua Barracuda FC. While the performances in the first two seasons were kind of okay, the third one became a neckbreaker. First rumors of lack of fundings already made rounds before the start of the season, and to make the situation even worse, the USL board decided that the Barracudas were not allowed to play matches at home anymore, since it was too time consuming and too costly for the visiting teams to make the trip to the Caribbean paradise. As a result, the Barracudas had only away matches and big troubles to find a home venue on American soil. This uncertainty led to a record-breaking third season, but in a negative way. They lost each of the 26 matches of the season. The club followed after the season and football was back to its non-professional status on the island. When the Cedar Grove Blue Jays gained promotion to the second division, they made a public announcement on their hunt for sponsors that listed the estimated cost of running a team for one season in the second division. Oh yeah, satisfy my curiosity. 30,000 East Caribbean dollars, around 11,000 US dollars, are needed to stay afloat, including the cost for a coach, a physiotherapist, general equipment, jerseys and transportation. So all you Bitcoin billionaires out there, want to support a team in Antigua? Costs you around $11,000 each year. The ABFA installed a national cup competition in 2004, but the last time it was placed out was in 2012. Bassa Sports Club is the most successful team in the competition with two victories. Let's check out the players. Since Antigua and Barbuda is a former British colony, several of the national team players were born and get their football education in the birthplace of football, England. Most notable players at the moment are Marlon Romeo, who currently is signed at English bad boy side Millwall, but is on loan at Portsmouth for the current season. 
DJ Buffonge, who currently plays in the Dutch second division at NIC Breda, went through the youth academies of Arsenal and Manchester United. But to this point, he never played for the Antigua national team. If the ABFA wants to grab a hold on him, they should hurry a little. Since he is even eligible to play for neighboring nation Montserrat and even for England, his brother Dajur already decided to play for Montserrat. Josh Parker just became a free agent this season after playing for Burton Albion. Before, he had stints at prestigious sites like Red Star Belgrade, Dom Saale, Aberdeen and even Queen's Park Rangers. Several other players of the national team play in the English 5th division, the National League. 19-year-old midfielder Dianri Bishop plays in Germany for Mönchengladbach. Not for the Bundesliga side Borussia, but for 6th division side Erster FC Mönchengladbach, 1st FC Mönchengladbach. The majority of the national selection plays at home in the Premier Division. The biggest player of all time is Peter Byers. He is the most capped player with 91 games for the national team and is also the top scorer with 44 goals. Let's check out the stadiums in the country. Pitches can be found throughout the island of Antigua. Barbuda on the other side is absolutely underdeveloped in case of football infrastructure. Roughly 95% of Antigua and Barbuda's population live on the main island Antigua. Most notable grounds are the Sir Vivian Richards Stadium on the outskirts of the capital St. John's. The ground actually is a cricket venue and has a capacity of around 10,000. It is named after the greatest sportsman of the small nation, Sir Vivian Richards. The batsman played cricket for the West Indies and there are even rumors that he played for the national football selection in the 1974 World Cup qualifiers, but I couldn't find any documents on the topic. The Antigua Recreation Ground in the city center of St. John's is another cricket venue that can be used for football games. The ABFA Technical Center, the main training ground for the Federation, was financed by the FIFA Gold Program and even though the amenities are pretty basic with an artificial pitch, floodlights and a simple steel pipe stand, it took them almost 16 years to complete it. So Berlin, don't feel awkward that it took almost 14 years to get your airport running. Football is a thing of passion in Antigua. Almost everybody who is active in the sport does it for the love of the game, not personal gains. The ABFA and the local clubs are keen on strengthening the grassroots football, but a small island nation like Antigua has its limit in its development. Maybe a professional inter-island league could be the next step for the small island nations of the Caribbean. Antigua Barracuda FC was a nice try to bring some professional structure to the island, but since they played most of the games against clubs from the US mainland, traveling costs were way too high. An inter-island league in the Caribbean could be the answer to that topic. Alright guys, that's it for the Antigua and Barbuda episode. Thank you for tuning in. You have some additional info on football in Antigua and Barbuda, or you want to drop some feedback? Share it in the comments section with a slowly growing Futu family. And watch out for the next episode when we deal with the first real powerhouse of worldwide football of the series, one of my personal favorite national selections and nations in general, Argentina. My name is Björn, this is Futur. Have a nice day.